your latest assignment is to make a stopwatch. And it should function like this. When, when we first turn on, we get a print either to your computer screen or your LCD screen that says press the button to start. We push the button. We keep track of how much time has passed. And when the button is pushed again, we display how long um, in between the two button pushes. And if the button is pushed again, we start over. And when we push again, and we display how much time has passed again. So this is a, like a low functionality stopwatch. But the assignment stops there. It doesn't tell you how to do any of this. And our future projects, which are much longer and more in-depth, will give you more step-by-step -step instructions. But this particular assignment didn't give that. So let's break down this problem into small steps and write some pseudocode to examine exactly what you should do uh, to, to write your code for the pick. Uh, we'll look at it one more time and then evaluate what the problem is before breaking it down into a solution. So when the pick first turns on and gets power, or after a reset, it should print press the button to start. Then when a button press is detected, it should print press to, press to stop. Um, you can, if you want to, print little updates like this. That's not required. And then when the button is pushed again, um, the timing stops. It displays how much time has passed in between those two button pushes, and it's primed to do it again. So let's take that problem statement and break it up in two parts. So the anatomy of this program, we need to print, press the button to start. Then when the button is pressed, we'll print press to stop. Then every 0.1 seconds or some update rate, we can print how much time has passed. Then when we detect uh, when the button is pressed, uh, we will print the total time that has passed and print press to repeat. Um, so at that point, we can then jump back up to the top and do the whole thing again. We're going to use an interrupt uh, to detect when the button is pressed. So when the button is pressed, that means that the voltage is going on a falling edge and pressed again. So we have two instances of that possibly happening. Um, that means that we need to keep track of what situation are we in when the button is pressed. When the button is pressed, should we be um, about to print press to stop, or should we be about to print how much time has passed, and should we uh, press to repeat? So the technique for keeping track of these button presses is to use something called a state variable. And we'll build what they kind of call a state machine. Um, we'll be building a relatively simple state machine here. And then obviously there's a lot of ways to solve this problem. Um, using the state variable and the state machine should simplify things. But if you found a, a solution already that doesn't involve this technique, go ahead and turn that in. That's, that's great. So uh, let's start writing some pseudocode. So I'm not going to write every line of code for you, but we can break it down into parts. So at the top of our code, we're going to have our uh, pound includes. whatever libraries we need, and maybe um, maybe they're part of the compiler, or maybe there's something we've added. So for instance, stdio.h and nu32.h, That's all, that always goes at the top of your code. Then it's very typical that we have our uh, global variables. At the top. And the global variables will be important here because that's how we're going to pass information back and forth from main to our ISRs. So I'm going to leave that a little bit of space for us to put some global variables in there. Then we're going to have this uh, ISR function. And this only occurs when the button push goes from high to low. Um, so we never call this function. We don't get to pass it any information. This function will just automatically run whenever the button goes from high to low. And then we have main. So what do we do in main? We have to initialize everything. We have to call the function nu32 startup um, that uh, you know sets up the pick for the right speed and all of the initial pins that it has. Uh, we have to um, set up the interrupt. And there's some sample code that shows you how to set um, the pin up for an external interrupt, like the high to low edge that our button will see. Um, then uh, eventually we come to our while one loop. 
This is the infinite while loop. And potentially we could have nothing happen in the infinite while loop, or we could try to stick some of the code in here. So let's try to build this up a little bit more. Uh, we have our debounce functionality. Uh, we talked about that in another video where once you get inside the ISR, you should wait a little bit of time, um, then see if the button is still pushed. If it's still low after 10 milliseconds, then consider um, this a real button push. So inside of this uh, debounce is probably something like if, it, if we've debounced and we've determined that this is a correct button push, then we'll do all of this action that we're about to do. So what do we do first? Well, uh, if we're just starting, we need to print press the button to start. But if the button has already been pushed, we need to print uh, the total time that has passed. So we're going to need some variables to store this kind of stuff. I'm going to make a global variable. Um, I'll call it state. And I'll initialize it to the value 0. And inside of the ISR, I will say if the state is 0, then we'll do our print, you know, start, all that information. And I will change the state to 1, so that the next time the button is pushed, we'll go to if state is 1. And if the state is 1, we will uh, print, you know, elapsed time, all that kind of stuff. So the state variable is important because uh, it's going to keep track of um, should we print the start or should we print the elapsed time. Um, when state is 0, we'll print start. We'll change state to 1. Uh, if the state is 1, we'll print elapsed time. And then we should set state back to 0. So then the next time around, we go back to here. So this is what creates the flip-flop from when we push the button, what do we do? Um, I, in my code, also did something where in while I said, if uh, the state is 1, I printed another time past stuff. Um, so that I knew um, what state I was in, what should be printing. Um, to do that, I could even probably do something like uh, I would have, uh, I, I could keep track of my states. And I could have more states too. So it might be easier to have a state one here and a state two here and, and things like that. So make it as complicated as you want, depending on uh, when you look at the problem statement, how many states you think you might need. Okay, we also, now, um, one thing we have to worry about is I'm using the state variable both in my infinite while loop and in my ISR. So it might get stuck in my cache memory, and depending on, you know, I might change state back to zero in the ISR, but down here in the while loop, I'm still using a state of one, so it might get confused. So I need to make sure I declare any variable that's shared between um, the ISR and outside the ISR as volatile, Um, so that uh, that tells the compiler don't ever stick this in the cache so that um, we don't accidentally use two different values of it from the ISR and while loop. So that's a good um, tip for any variable that's used inside of ISR, always declare it volatile. Okay, so the first time the button is pushed, uh, we'll print start, we'll set the state to one. We need to remember what time it is. So uh, I will make a variable. Uh, volatile int, uh, I'm gonna call it start time. And I'll make another one called end time, et and st. Okay, so uh, if uh, the button is pushed and we get past the debounce and the state is zero, uh, we'll remember that the start time is equal to uh, the cp0 get count value. So figure out uh, what time the core timer is when we uh, hit the start button. Um, if the button is pushed and we're in state one, that means we should figure out what time the end time is. Uh, so the end time is also equal to my CP0 get count function. And my elapsed time is going to be something like uh, the uh, end time minus the start time. Remember that those have the units of 
uh, a core timer ticks, the core timer is ticking at 40 megahertz. So I probably want to do something like divide that by uh, 40 million uh, so that I turn it from ticks back into seconds. And remember that printing usually involves something like uh, doing an sprintf and then an nu32 write or an lcd print. Okay, I think that's um, the basics here. Sometimes in the setup, we might also print something just so that we know our code has started. Um, the debounce can be tricky because the debounce has a delay in it, and our delays so far have used the core timer, and our delay was something like uh, set CP0 to 0, and then while uh, CP0 is less than some number, we'll just wait. Um, in this case, though, by setting the core timer to zero, every time the button is pushed, we'll mess up our start and end times. So instead, our delay will change to... Um, it's getting messy, but we're going to uh, read time. And maybe I'll put it into a variable called t. And then I can say while CP0 minus t is less than some number that represents the number of milliseconds we want to wait. So what was implied before was that because we set the core timer to zero, we could say while CP0 minus zero is less than some number. Now we could say while um, the core timer minus this like initial time is less than some number, we'll do nothing. And that will make our delay. The only thing we really have to worry about here is that the core timer, when it first turns on, starts at the number zero. And as time goes by, it will eventually hit the number 4 billion, and then it will roll back over to zero. So we might have to worry about the case where, oh god, sometimes reading the core timer is going to be a small number, and the last time it was a big number, so this would be a really big negative number. Let's not worry about that kind of problem here. Um, it takes a couple minutes before that happens, so uh, we'll limit our program here to only run for a few minutes before that rollover occurs. All right, so hopefully this is helpful. Uh, you always want to take the problem statement that you've been given for your assignment. Uh, think about what is the best technique for turning this into code. Um, start writing up some, some chicken scratch here of pseudocode to figure out what happens inside of the infinite while loop inside of main, what happens inside of the ISR, what kind of global variables are you going to need. And don't try to write this whole thing at once, obviously. Start with the sample code that just blinks a light every time the button is pushed. Add your debounce to make sure it doesn't uh, blink too often. Uh, and then start adding states with print statements to help you.